So, uh, have we met before? No, no, I'm pretty sure this is the first time we met. Hey guys, welcome back to Super Important Reviews. My name's Steve, and today we'll be going over the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Legacy Dragon Zord from Bandai. Now, I've been really excited about this figure ever since it was spoiled because I already had the Megazord and the Dragon Dagger and pretty much everything else to go with the Legacy series. And to be honest, this is actually my first Dragon Zord that I've ever owned. So I'm really excited to get this out of the packaging and actually see just how sweet this figure is. And if you guys have never seen our Legacy Dragon Dagger review that we had on our old channel on Import Reviews, you can guess that the Dragon Zord is definitely my favorite of the Megazords. And next would probably be the White Tiger Zord. And as you can also guess, Tommy is definitely my favorite of the Rangers. I love the Green and White Ranger. Jason David Frank is awesome. But enough about my nerdiness for the packaging. For the front of it, it's actually really sweet where it shows the Dragon Zord here. And it has this nice little metallic effect here for the Legacy. And it tells you that it's got metallic paint up here and the die cast parts. Which actually, this has quite a bit of it. And then he has an 11 inch articulated tail. Which is yeah, I can really that. impressive. And that's what she said. <laughs> but then for the set top of the packaging. Thank you. <laughs> the like. It just has Tommy here as the Green Ranger with the Dragon Zord head here and just more of the text up here. Then for the side of the packaging, it has his bio, which I'll zoom in for you guys. Here it is in English. Here it is in something else. And last but not least, right here too. And then here's the Dragon Zord stats, where his height's 124 feet, his length is 203 feet, he weighs 340,000 pounds, which this figure also weighs that spoiler. <laughs> just kidding. But anyways, the speed he goes is 86 miles per hour, and his weapon is a dragon laser drill, or the power laser drill, sorry. Which I think is funny because even in these other languages, it's the power laser drill in all of them. It's just, it's just pretty neat. And for the back of the packaging, you get the dragon zord here, and it also shows the mega zord here, which is sold separately, but it's really sweet that he actually can combine to make the mega dragon zord. So that's really awesome, and it just tells you the same thing on the front with the Diecast parts, paint, and the articulated tail. And then for the side of the packaging, it just has the bio for the actual Power Rangers here, which I'll zoom in for you guys. Here it is in English. One and two. And then the bottom just got a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo. So that's pretty much it for the packaging. Let's get it up and up out of its cardboard prison. All right, so going over his accessories, he comes with the staff for his power laser drill, which there isn't too much to show off here right now. So I'll just give you a little good look at this right here. But I'll show you guys in a little bit what it actually looks like combined with the staff, which actually looks pretty sweet. Except it doesn't really stand all that well. So I'm just gonna be leaving it flat. Then he also comes with a pair of interchangeable hands, which I had the one on him already, which is just the normal, like he's firing the missile pose. And then he also comes with these pair of hands that are more of a relaxed position, which I think they actually look really nice and they got this really awesome silver paint on it. And it's really reminiscent of the TV show, which is actually a lot of this figure is very accurate to the TV show. And I'm really actually happy, too, that they gave you different poses for the hands because you don't always see them with the hands straight up. But personally, I just really like these just because it's a little bit more of an iconic look for him from the show. But I still think these are great accessories nonetheless. And then getting into the Dragon Sword. So the first thing I want to go over is I love the amount of detail on this figure because... I don't actually own the original Dragon Zord, but just seeing it from a lot of screenshots is he has a lot of decals on him, just like the original Megazord did. And on this figure, it's actually all either etched in or painted on. Like, this is all etched in up here on his neck. Back here is mainly just painted, but it still looks great nonetheless. Same with here on his chest piece. On this armor plate down here, and especially here, this is all painted on. His kneecaps are actually raised up, which is actually really sweet. And the same back here on his tail with all these little section pieces, which it just looks fantastic. And overall for show accurateness, he actually looks pretty well spot on. The only noticeable difference I've seen is this should probably have more of the gold painting here. And then same for back here on his tail, he's missing a lot of paint right here. But it's still really nice that they have the detailing in here on his tail. And another thing I so love with this tail is just seeing the original and how short the tail is. 
and just how massive this is. Like, this is almost pretty close to the articulation you get with, like, an SH Monster Arts figure. Like, this thing just... Look at how much that moves. Like, all of these rotate around. Same with up here at the tail. And I was actually initially very surprised when I got this out of the packaging that he has this much play with his tail. Especially with the Megazord having pretty much the same articulation as the original one did. And this one just having a decent amount of improvement over that, just at least with the tail. This is a really awesome touch. And I also really like how slim this figure looks in comparison. Because that figure was fairly bulky and a little bit shorter. Which I'll compare this to the uh, Legacy Megazord and the other one a little bit. But he actually stands up very nicely next to him. So overall I'm really impressed with that. And then just to show off a little bit more of the detailing here. I really love this chest piece here. And one thing I really, really wish this figure came with is some kind of lights and sounds. Because especially on the TV show and the original figure, his chest piece would light up. His chest piece here would light up and blink, and it would make this beater, 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 beater sound for how it did in the TV show when he was about to get ready to shoot the missiles out of his fingers. And it would have been nice to maybe have that, just to bring back a little bit of a nostalgia factor. But still, overall, I am just impressed with the way this figure looks, and especially how slim it is. Like, it's just, this thing looks fantastic. And then, for a little bit of his articulation, his little blade on his head here can move up and down, but that's mainly just for when it goes to the Mega Dragon Zord. It just sits up here, so you have that option, but you should probably keep it down the back. Just personal opinion. And then for his mouth here, it can move up and down. And as you can see here, the eyes kind of shift a bit because when he goes into battle mode, which you can see the faceplate right here, the eyes actually shift into the body, and it just would have been really nice that they maybe any way of having it stick in a little better so when you have the mouth kind of moving it wasn't just like his eyes were sinking into his head a bit it's a little bit distracting but still sitting on the shelf like it looks it looks amazing and then for his shoulders you can move them in and out which they latch in right here but if you really wanted the option you can have them come out and then so his shoulders can move a little bit around which is really nice and you can have them move back and forth so it gives you a little bit of playability with it if you really want it. And then for his arms here, they can move up and down. And especially if you move them out, they actually have a decent range of motion. And his hand has a rotation and it can bend up and down. And then also just to show you guys, this is how you attach the arm or the hand piece if you want. So that just pops right off. And then you take the hand here and you can just pop it right back on. Which, yeah. It's pretty stiff, but it gets on there pretty easy and it holds it in very well. And overall, it still looks really nice with that on there too, but personally, I still really like this one. So, good. just get that back on. And then, hooking his arch shoulders back in. For his waist here, there's nothing down here. For his legs, they can move back and forth. They can't really go any farther back unless you pop the tail off. And when you do that, it has a little bit more range of motion. Then he has a bend here at the knee. And then also a bend at the foot. And then back here for his tail, which I kind of showed off earlier, but I'll show it to you guys again, is this thing can pretty much do whatever you want. <laughs> Each of these can rotate, and they're all on ball joints, so you get a lot of playability with it. And it also has a rotation here at the top of the tail, and it can go all the way around. So again, overall, I am just super impressed with this toy. From what I've seen, it seems like a very big improvement over the original Dragon Zord. And I actually can't wait to get this thing in the battle mode. So here's the Dragon Zord in battle mode. And going over his accessory after put together, which here's the power drill. And, um, I think it's a little limp here. But what you do is when you want to put it in this form, all you do is you just push the tail down. Bam! Makes the drill. Which it's hard to fully show to you guys just how massive this is, which I'll back the camera up just so you guys can see in comparison to the actual Zord. So after getting the camera back here, this thing is massive. <laughs> and, but it's still got a lot of detail, but it's just, it's a very impressive weapon nonetheless. So getting into the actual figure here, 
If you don't own the original Legacy Megazord, you're not going to be able to get it into this form because you'll be missing the Mastodon, the Sabertooth Tiger, and Triceratops to get it into here. But if you have it, this looks great. Going over the details on them a little bit. Overall, I really like the head sculpt on here. It's really nice looking and I love the shade of red on here. And it's really neat. Especially with the eyes the way they sink in, which you kind of see it was doing that in Dragonzord form. But here it just kind of gives it this nice like helmet look instead of having the eye visor there. So I really love that touch and it's very reminiscent of the TV show. The only thing that kind of is a little offsetting for me is that it just seems like the head goes in pretty far back to me and it didn't seem like there's any way of pushing it forward. So that's a little bit odd for me. Oh geez, the legs popping out. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and then overall the detailing out here, like especially when you bring the shoulder plates down or to come across the front for the transformation. This is a really nice looking chest plate. And then for the Mastodon arms here, I haven't ever reviewed that, so I'll actually go over a little bit, but they overall, they only got a little bit of mobility where you can rotate them all the way around. They can't really move in and out. And then the arms here have a bit of a pivot. That's really about it, nothing at the hands. And then the shoulder pads can move up and down. But it's really nice looking nonetheless, and it's more die cast parts here. And especially when you start combining this Dragonzor with the Megazor, it starts increasing the heft of this figure quite a bit. And then just, uh, especially coming down here, which he has articulation at the legs. Lift up his arm a bit. But, eh, get that back on there. His legs can go, can't go any farther back, but you can bring it forward a bit. And there's technically a pen here at the knee, but it kind of, pops this out and it won't really stand very well with if you want to mess around with it like that and then not much here at the feet here because it can only go down and same with this leg over here with the triceratops but just zooming back a bit just so you guys can get a better view of how this figure is going to look it still looks fantastic nonetheless it's just the overall girth of this figure is just a very heavy figure and i haven't actually weighed it in but a little bit hard to actually lift up like this because you got you gotta remember there's die cast parts here for the triceratops saber to tiger here all this his waist here and the feet here so this makes us a very heavy figure so when you lift them up sometimes stuff's gonna want to pop out just because of the weight but he still stands on the shelf very nice because he has a nice heavy low center of gravity so you'll stand up pretty well and then I'll show you guys how to get the drill in, especially how massive this thing is. Is back here, because this is the actual chest piece for the Dragon Sword, but back here there's a little flap here where you bring down. And if you guys can see it, there's a handle in here. What you do is you pop it forward. And on mine, because especially on the uh, trying to get the Megazord sword in, it's really hard to fit it in that hole. So what you gotta do is you take this peg and the best way I can recommend doing it is I don't really want to recommend pushing down because you might pressure the joint, but I just rotate it in a little bit and just wiggle it in, which looks a little goofy, but it seems to work on mine and I haven't messed it up yet. And then you just bring it down and bam, it's holding his drill. And like I said, just it's really tough to get in there, so I would just be a little bit careful trying to get it on. Because I can imagine eventually over time that, that little peg could probably break. But it's still a very imposing looking figure. And overall, backing up just a bit. So bringing back the camera, this is a very large figure when you put it with the drill here. And it's just insane because you figure... It's got about 11 inches right there with the articulation now, so it's probably a little bit shorter sitting like that. But still, that's gonna be, that's over about 18 inches of figure right there with just the drill. So real quick, I'm just gonna show you guys how to get this into the Mega Dragon Zord because it's actually a little bit of the pain in the butt, at least for me. So what you're gonna wanna start with is you're gonna wanna put the shoulder pads down. And then the only other thing you really gotta do is on the back here, 
where his tailpiece is, you're just going to want to bring that down for a minute. Because back here, you'll see right here, there's this little peg hole. Which, I've already partially transformed it. Well, except for his head pop back down. Get back up there. But on the back of his head here, you'll see that there's this little flap of plastic that just kind of sits up here. And this is where you're going to insert it into the peg hole on the back of the Megazord here. So, what you're going to want to do is you flop this thing open. Also, it would probably help if you actually rotate the Megazord, so you just see what I'm doing. You're also going to want to bring these flaps back here because it won't show very well. It won't sit well in here, so you have to have it back because they kind of peek out through the back of the hole here. But what you want to do is start with the back. You bring it in underneath just so that the spikes can rest in the back. And then you pretty much just bring it forward. And eventually you'll get it to sit on there nice. Don't try to wiggle in it too hard because I'd be afraid to break this little plastic piece, but once you set it in, it's really easy to get it in. And then back here, you just stick this in the pickle, let the tail back up and it'll click in there really nicely so it'll stay very secure. And then that's pretty much it. You just gotta fold the legs up into here so that you get your cannons. Bam, done. Now I'll back away just so you guys can see a little better. After lifting this part up up here, this is actually a very also nice looking pose for this figure. Because I really love the way the detail shows up on the bottom of the feet that accurately represent the cannons. Because on the original one, it didn't really have the coloring here or anything. So this actually looks really awesome. But one thing I want to point out is having this form is this is stupid heavy. Because... <laughs> You literally have all the die-cast parts combining with everything. And my one like really likes to fall out. Uh, there it goes, stay. So, as you can see, my figure is starting to tip over a little bit because of the weight on here. It's really leaning on here, and I've had them actually tip over a bit over time with the weight here, because eventually it just gets a little front heavy and actually popped out of the pickles here. So if you want to keep this on your shelf, I would just make sure to have it on a nice, even flat surface and possibly somewhere towards the back of it, just so in case if it did tip over, it'll at least land on the table and not fall on the floor or anything, because I would be afraid of something like that happening. But still, it looks really nice in this form nonetheless. Like I love the way the cannon hands kind of sit up here. And I would kind of wish that these arms weren't bent in so much, but because he's kind of got his like hands on his hips like hey but so this is really sweet looking nonetheless and it's a nice nice option to go with i probably won't be keeping it on my shelf like this because of i don't have a whole lot of real estate sitting on my shelves so he i would be very afraid of this thing tipping so it'll probably be either in the battle form or the actual dragon's Org. but it's still a really nice option nonetheless and really very nicely represents the tv show so for starters, here is the Legacy Dragonzord compared next to the Legacy Megazord. And here he is next to the largest Mechagodzilla I got in my collection with the American Bandai Kiryu. And here he is compared next to the original Megazord, which this thing's massive. And here he is compared next to the NECA Claptrap. So overall, the Legacy Dragonzord, I am actually very impressed with this figure. I overall think it is awesome. I really am surprised with the amount of articulation this figure has with the tail, the shoulder pads here, and the arms and the hands. And especially the amount of accessories, like I was very surprised he actually came with extra hands. And the overall, the drill is very impressive. And the only real downer for me is just, I really wish this would have had some kind of light and sound effect. But overall, with the amount of die cast, the paint, and the detail on him, I think it more than makes up for that. And with his $80 price tag, I personally think it's really worth it, and especially if you have the the Legacy Megazord, I really can't see why you shouldn't have this in your collection. But, so what do you guys think? Do you guys love the Power Rangers? Do you guys like the Dragonzord? Are you guys just not a big fan of Jazz Hands? Please let us know in the comments. We'll have pictures on my Facebook if you want to click the link in the description below. And if you like this video and want to see more stuff like this, please give us a like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Oh God, Steve, what did you do to him? Look at this. I'm just trying to assemble the power drill. Hey, look. He can stand by himself. Awesome. <laughs>
Nice. <laughs>